Hello, friends. My name's Weston. You're listening to Profoundish. My friend Alex will be joining us here in just a moment. And we're going to talk about, one, a bunch of random things, but then also two, video games. I hope you are prepared to listen to us talk about Baldur's Gate 3, Gears of the Wingdom, and tier list some video game stuff. You're listening to Profoundish. Fifty-four is now <laughs> the hits of nineteen fifty-four. What was Hey Google? What was the number one musical hit in nineteen fifty-four? Probably gonna say like what month? It was Little Things Mean a Lot by Kitty Khaled with Jackie Plice. Please, no Plice? idea. Not sure. Kitty Callan, we're listening to Kitty Callan. Little things mean a lot. You know, little I have things no idea. do mean a lot, though. <laughs> and then it's the, the number, little things, right? The number two was "Wanted" by Perry Como, and the third was "Hey There" by Rosemary Clooney with Buddy Cole, and number four was "Shaboom" by The Crew Cuts with David Carroll. The only one I knew was Perry Como, and I don't even know if I really know who that is. I just know the name. Without hearing the song, that it not none of that's doing anything in my brain. <laughs> it's not doing anything for me. <laughs> not, my brain's not uh, not tickled with those names. Nothing, nothing's uh, wrinkling the old uh, synapses. Here's a new, here's a new Alex and Weston back in the day story. So back in the day, Weston in in high school, he drove his dad's truck. Yeah, and. I, I loved that truck. It was a nice big blue truck. I can't even remember what kind of it was. At the was time, like it, was, a, it was a Ford F-150, and it was like brand F-150. new at the time. And my dad's like, okay, I have this brand new truck. All right, Weston, drive it so I can drive your Toyota to work because he had to work further away. So for the oh. gas mileage, the mileage was better on my car, and I was just driving to school, which was like, I don't know, a few blocks away or whatever. So he's like, right. drive my brand new F-150, this massive like, blue thing. Okay. <laughs> I'll drive now, your Toyota. Was that... No, I, the reason why I thought of that when we talked about the 50s stuff, was that the car where the CD got stuck in it and you could only yeah. play one CD? Or am I mixing that up with a different Yeah, car? I got some... I don't even remember what the CD was supposed to be, but it was just a bunch of just random oldie hits or something like yeah. that. <laughs> and it, it it had like 16 candles. It had Blueberry Hill. And then Blueberry it had, Hill. in particular, Tequila... Nah, 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 oh, nah, I, did, nah, I don't nah, remember nah. that. Oh, I listened to Tequila so many goddamn times on that CD. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just remember having a, a brief conversation with you um, in there once about it because, like, you were listening to it, and I thought, so this was during a time where I was super into older music. Like, I did like this. I remember I was going through an era of that where I just that's all I cared about. I didn't care about anything current. Um, and then I remember like, oh, Weston's listening to like some fifties. This is cool. <laughs> and then, which, and I know you do like some of that stuff, but then you're like, yeah, yeah. it's, I kind of have no choice. It's the only, <laughs> there's a CD stuck in here. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. And I, I made a big sure deal of annoying. it. I made a big deal out of like, oh, I have no other choice, but I mean, the radio worked. I didn't have to play the <laughs> CD. <laughs> it's I a new a CD truck. more than once of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just I just always played the CD, and it's like if I had to give someone a ride, it's like, are you a fan of tequila? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Blueberry nah. Hill. I mean, okay, honestly, who's not a fan of tequila though? That's a great song. Yeah, I mean, it's just I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't re- even remember who it's by, but like that, that made that whoever made whoever s- sang that bank because that's I don't know. It's a bop, no matter what the context is. Now, but, when I think of context, I can't help but not separate it from Pee Wee. That's the only thing I can think of. Did you see Pee Wee's Great Adventure? I wasn't a Pee Wee guy growing up, but I did see at least one Pee Wee Herman movie. Pee- something was it the one with the Pee- bike? Maybe. I don't see. He I, lost his I, bike. I, I'm confused because I've also seen so many clips now that I don't remember what movie I saw versus what clips I remember, and I've combined them all. I oh. saw a couple Mr. Bean movies, but that's not really related to Pee Wee Herman. 
No, but great movies, though, by the way. Like, those were awesome. I loved those as a kid. Um, I, I think there was maybe a Pee Wee Herman movie I saw. Was there more than one? I think there was two, but nobody talks about the second one, one of those kind of things. And, you know, I'm not even 100% sure I did see either movie and only just pieces of it throughout the years. Well, I'm, I don't even I'll paint, know. I'll paint this picture the best I can because it's been years for me, too. But So that movie, first of all, creeped me out when I was a kid. And, and like, in the show, like, so if, and I know you've seen clips of the show before. The show is just, it's like an acid trip the whole time. But I, <laughs> and maybe in the right context, you could call it creepy. But the movie legit was kind of like ominous and weird but it was still like a kids movie but not a kids movie and it turns out that was um tim burton's directorial debut <laughs> was peewee's <laughs> which makes sense now peewee's great adventure what a weird start by the way you, you know you um, say that and i laugh and i'm like that's wild and then the back of my mind i'm like i think i've heard that i think i knew that and it's one of those just weird you think tim burton you know like nightmare before christmas and you're like peewee herman right. was his directorial debut yes. okay you, you know that was him just taking whatever job he could to get into oh, directing God, yeah. right that was not his passion project i'm not saying he didn't do a good job or whatever i'm sure his passion was uh, elsewhere he's like i gotta do this and then i can start doing my own stuff <laughs> we, we, we all gotta pay our dues right <laughs> oh that's funny well there's a scene in that where like peewee so you, you know he's that weird dapper dress quirky dude and he's in this like really like rough like biker bar and like you know there's smoke everywhere and it's just it's just a dingy bar and then i don't remember what the context is but i i learned tequila from this movie and i think it got pretty popular from the movie too because this came out this movie came out in the 80s at one at some time the song's older than that but it got like a resurgence with that movie and anyway he's like up on the pool table like, just doing this weird dance to tequila while everyone's getting drunk. <laughs> and everyone's like, at first, he's like kind of scared that he's in the bar. Then all of a sudden, everyone's like, yeah, tequila! They're all dancing and stuff. It's a, it's like probably the most iconic scene of the movie. So if you don't remember that, you may not have seen that one. I don't remember that. But I feel like part of me wants to say, I think I saw a clip of that. But I, that could just be my brain inventing stuff at this point. I don't know what's real anymore. My brain just hallucinates memories at this point. And I don't know what's real anymore. Well, that's not good. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ever have a dream that's like that not a weird dream? It's like a, a just a day. Like you just have a dream about a normal wake up, go to work day. And then you actually wake up and it was so real that it just becomes like, wait, was that real or did, was that a dream? Did I actually just have a full working day okay. added to yes, my I life? Have. That's what I mean. <laughs> Yes, I've had those. <laughs> I, I had those a lot when I was working my retail job that I hated. And yeah. I remember I would dream. <laughs> I would dream, and I, I remember like I was working the job that I wanted to escape from. And, of course, I'm <laughs> thinking about it, you know. And and I remember, like, I'd get PTSD, not real, real PTSD, but pretty dang close with, like, I would wake up because I thought I would hear, you know, like, when you walk in, it's probably the same thing in a subway. Like, you will open the door, there's, like, a little bell. Oh, right, God, bell, yeah. Little, Okay, so that is that'll be in your brain forever. It's just there, and it's the same with me with my retail job. And I I remember if I heard any noise that closely resembled that ring in the real world, it would wake me up, and I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> dead sweat, I, it's like a cold sweat. Yeah, it was it was so bad because like just something that's similar to it. I remember one time it was my um, alarm, like my alarm had was like a high ringing noise at the time, and it was just like a ting. Ting. I've changed it since, by the way. But <laughs> I just remember, like, I could associate that, and I'd go, yep, that's it. Got to go to work. And then I'd wake up and realize that's not it. So, but yes, I've had the mundane, everyday life dreams, and it's like, is this life or is this <laughs> fantasy? <laughs> is this the real life? Caught in a landslide? Uh, are we human or are we denser? Classic. So good. There's another Alex and Weston story. I'm sure there's a story that? in there somewhere. Well, because I, uh, I always thought that the lyric was, are we human or are we dancer? So I, oh, yeah. in my brain, trying to make sense of the lyrics, was like, well, what's the difference between a human and a dancer? And I just remember trying, I went deep on this song without looking up the lyrics yeah. at all, just going straight by what I thought I heard the lyrics were about like what, the, what it meant to be human and like 
what it meant to be a dancer in life or some I don't remember the details, but I remember having this conversation with you. Yeah, it was we were at the fair. <laughs> we were at what like the county fair. And I remember we were driving, we were walking back to our cars, and you, I think the song came on or something. It was newer at that point. And uh, <laughs> I just remember you had this whole thing about, are we human or are we dancer? And then you went on this whole thing. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, it's very profoundish in style. A, we were a doing bit. profoundish long before profoundish. But yeah, finding anyway, the me. deeper meaning behind something a little absurd, only to find out it was based on, <laughs> on false information to begin with. Yeah, right. Because I thought it was Dancer too. Yeah, I didn't know it, it was Dancer. Like. I don't know that it makes any more sense to say Dancer. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, I was, I got so convinced with my Dancer, uh, uh, not analogy. What's the word I'm looking for? Whatever my my Dancer take that like right. when I found out it was Dancer, I'm like, oh, that's stupid. <laughs> you, it's hard to unhear <laughs> things because I, I know that. Um, in my head, it's still, I'm going to take my horse to the hotel room. <laughs> take my I horse? can't get it out of my head. Uh, mine was Go always, uh, and I've mentioned this many times before, maybe on the podcast, I don't remember. The, my classic one is, I bless the rains down in Africa for God knows how many years. Since the very first time I ever heard this song for like a decade plus or whatever, I thought it was, I guess it rains down in Africa. So yeah, that's that, reasonable, though, which, again, to me, after I had like, you know, try to like figure out like the meaning behind the song in my head, the way I wanted to take it, it makes so much more sense than I bless the rays out in Africa to the point where I prefer my version. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a lot. It sounds like I, I, I could see where you're going with that, too. Like, like it could be a very like poetic in meaning. Um, this I you know I guess it rains down in Africa that can really lead to something. Yeah, like I, so, I imagine a lot of people when they think of Africa they think like deserts or savanna, just dry and drought, and the only water for hundreds of miles is the one watering hole or whatever. Right. Um, very like you know uh, Lion King or something like that or whatever. But then I guess it does rain in Africa. You know. Right. So Which like can that, lead that was, to a bigger meaning. Yeah. Right, and that that meant a lot more to me than I bless the rains down in Africa. I'm like, well, what does that mean? Why do you need a bless the rain? What makes you so special that you're blessing rain? <laughs> what are you, the rain man? What what is what is this? I will say, um, remember when the the apple bottoms jeans like memes were popular? Yeah. So they did a version of Africa with the lyrics to apple bottom jeans, and it might be my favorite. <laughs> so they got the apple bottom jeans. <laughs> like it's my favorite because it's not good like some of them work really well like they fit that one doesn't fit but it fits so badly that it makes it my favorite because so they got the apple butt of jeans <laughs> boots with the fur the ho- it just it goes on and on it's good there there there's it's okay to relish in something that you know is really bad but not bad in a bad way. it's so bad that it's good it's so bad that you can laugh at it it's not so bad that you're like i hate it Right. What's wrong with that, right? I feel like we're the... And I'm just throwing this out there, but I feel like yeah. kind of our age group, we're, like, we're the first generation to really embrace the bad and like be okay with it and <laughs> almost celebrate it. We're the first you know? generation to truly embrace mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it feels that way. Like, you know, you, you ironically like something. What did I you know, share? Something on, like that. What did I share on Twitter the other day? I don't remember. This was... Um, Oh, what was it? It was, it was, I'm going to find it. Hang on. Profile. I'm going to my Twitter right now. Uh-oh. This was so funny that I can't remember what it even was. It's hilarious. That's, oh, that's, here we go. It was, it was just a quote and it had a, like a bust, like a, like a Roman bust of this, this guy's face. But anyway, the, the quote was, eh, good enough. Mediocrities. <laughs> and instead of like <laughs> Sophocles or whatever his name right. is. <laughs> it's just, eh, good enough. That's funny. That's good. <laughs> eh. So how's that? Uh, how's that Twitter game going? How's your villain era? Uh, you know the villain era that I, I don't. I have not become villainous enough, honestly. Okay. But uh, the Twitter game's tweeting. I mean, or Xing. The X game's Xing. Come oh, follow right, me on yeah. X. I'm uh, I'm I'm at Weston Hasty on X. 
I'm I've I've gone whole hog, Alex. I, I oh, I'm semi ashamed to say it, but also again, villain error, right? So I'm, I'm not allowed right. to care about anybody. I'm verified, so now I get to feel oh. important. Nice. And now, which is hilarious. I I ha- I've had my first viral re not viral, but I'm going to call it viral reply tweet to someone else's tweet that has twenty five thousand impressions on it. I'm like, ha, I'm Jeez. popular. No, it was just a popular Dang. post. I just I just piggybacked off of it. So I'm pretending to be very, very popular, guys. You should come follow me. Become one of my 6,000 plus followers. We're going to we're going to rise up and storm like a beach or something like that. Coming up. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's going to something. Storm gonna the happen. beaches of Normandy. Come come join my Twitter cult. We're going to storm something. We're going to storm a beach. Yeah, I like that. Storm like. I'm trying to think. You know what'd be hilarious? There's there's a beach here in Memphis that like nobody ever goes to because it's not really a beach, but it looks like one in the middle of like of this park. We're and storming it. Really, Rise up. <laughs> yeah. It's really run down. No one's gonna be there. You you should do it. Put it on the map. <laughs> I put it on the map. Put a pin in it. We're gonna flash storm this as a like a Twitter like meet and greet. It's gonna be great. Oh, man, if you constructed something like that and made it for something so, like, nothing, I, oh, that that's amazing. The only reason I ever construct anything is for nothing. I mean... It's just, it's just it's who you are. <laughs> Embrace the me- mediocrity. Nothing, nothing right. is done for anything. I guess it's less um, mediocrity and more, like, nihilism or something. I don't know. Well, either way, fo- do follow him, because w- when I was on Twitter, yeah. he always had some funny stuff. Yeah, I'm hilarious. Come follow me. If you're listening so to this you... podcast, clearly you like me. That, it's not that you're here for Alex. You're definitely here for me. Follow me on Twitter. <laughs> you um, know what I bet, though? I, I bet you anyone, I bet you most of our audience who listens to Profoundish, if I were to guess, and they have a Twitter, they probably already follow you. I'm just taking a guess. No, no, that. no. I'm no. guessing if, if you're listening to this podcast, there's like already like a 50 50 shot. They even have Twitter. And then if they have Twitter, that's it's like a 50 50 shot that they're like, uh, like, like even remotely interested in following me. But even of the people that are like, oh, yeah, I'd follow him. Never followed up. I bet like a, a, a tenth of those people. I bet like four people listening right now are following me on Twitter. Four. Well, you know. I can't. I, <laughs> the more I think about it, I'm not really going to argue that, and not not for you personally, but just because it's so hard for anybody to know anything you do besides like one thing they discover you for, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I have so many people still who will like, or not so many, but some that will like comment on like one of my original songs and go, "I didn't know you did original music." It's like, yeah, I've been doing original like, music for three years. <laughs> not only do I do original music, I have put out an album and an EP. <laughs> exactly it, it, some people just they just don't know so which i mean everyone's living their own beautifully complex and busy lives i get it i get it but they should be paying more attention to us i was say busy complex less important lives <laughs> less <laughs> less important lives oh uh, funny so uh alex now that we're yes, sir now that we're waist deep in this episode already you want to yeah you want to talk about some video games? <laughs> oh heck yes, man! Let's let's do it. You want to talk to, <laughs> talk about some uh, video games? Oh, I bet I, I know one reason why you wanted to talk about video games. I you'd probably know the reason I want to talk about video games today. Yeah. If you if you follow my Twitter, everybody, if you follow my Twitter, you know because I've been tweeting about it. I wrote a poem on Twitter. It was really good. You want to hear it? You wrote a poem. Wait, yeah, hold yeah, on. Yeah. Is it about the game I think it's about? It is. <laughs> okay, I want to hear it. it. It's it's you and me, Baldur's Gate three, <laughs> and then it's the two finger emojis pointing at each other to do like the <laughs> the the ooh ooh weeb like the whatever ooh, that, yeah. whatever whatever that I don't know what to call that but that you know you know the one that's my oh, I know the one. I've been playing Dang. a ton of Baldur's Gate three. So that's been on my mind lately, and I'm just like, Alex likes video games. We'll talk about some video games or something, about like RPGs and stuff that like really well, suck us into the, the game, the plot, the experience, or whatever. Yeah, we, we were actually just talking about that. Um, and I actually would like to hear a little bit about Baldur's Gate 3, because um, first of all, I know that it's like doing massively well, and I also know that you wanted to play it, but I haven't talked to you since it came out. Like we, Last time we talked, it came out that day. So I'm sure you, you're pretty... 
deep into it. And I want to know how you feel about it, and I want to kind of vicariously live it through you because I just don't have it in me right now to play it, even though I really want to, if, if that makes sense. Uh, oh, yeah, because you were telling me when we last talked that you had already put like a bunch of time into uh, Legend of Zelda uh, Gears of the Wingdom or whatever it's called. And yeah, Gears of the Wingdom, that's right. I don't remember what this is. Tears of the Kingdom was this, the first game, right? No. No, yeah? that's the new one. No, that's, that's the Breath new one. Breath of the Wild. Oh, Breath of the Wild. Okay, so I, I made up a name. I thought it, Tears of the Kingdom was the first one. I'm like, I don't remember the name of the sequel. Turns out <laughs> I didn't remember the name of the first game. Never mind. So Tears of the Kingdom, Gears of the Wingdom, whatever. I know right. you put a bunch of time into that, so you were like, oh, I don't want to jump into another like multi-hundred-hour game. I want to do something right. more relaxed, which I fully understand because a lot of the stuff I do on YouTube is a, a lot smaller in scope. So I play these games off and on for a couple hours at a time. I don't get like super invested in something. And apparently Baldur's Gate 3 was the, the, like, um, the dam that broke or something like that, where it's like, oh, I'm super invested now. <laughs> This is right. all I want to do. Um, I think the last time it's I was such like a magical super, feeling. Yeah, I think the last time I was super invested was uh, Cyberpunk 2077. So I'm looking forward to Phantom Liberty coming out, or Slash It is out, and I haven't noticed. Because I look forward to jumping oh, yeah, back into that Oh, yeah, that's like that big DLC or whatever. Yeah, that's its expansion pack, and then they are also like revamping the game and a bunch of stuff, like tweaking and changing or whatever. So I look forward to like jumping back into that after all those changes are done, and I'm preferably done with Baldur's Gate. Um, at least one playthrough of Baldur's Gate. So, but yeah, Baldur's Gate three right now. I've put quite a bit of time into it, but I couldn't tell you how much time because I've definitely just left it running on my computer and then just like buggered off and or gone to bed or something. And my computer's just still running. My computer thinks I've been playing right. the game for 155 hours. I have not, but I don't. What? But I was going to say, no way already. <laughs> I know. Well, that's because I've just left the gut game running. I'm like, yeah. I want to come back to this. Like, I don't even want to like spend the time to boot up my computer and start the game or whatever. I'm just like, I'll, I'll be back. And it'll be like eight hours later. I'm like, oh, shoot, the game's still on. <laughs> Dang. Um, so, yeah. Well, based on what I've seen, because I've been like watching some stuff about it and just I'm hearing people talk about it just on the places of the Internet that I still roam. And <clears throat> it looks like, obviously, it. This game seems, like, really huge. I know, like, high ratings. And some people were talking about, um, like, in general, now for people like you and me, this may not feel like a genre that's too off from what we would like, but I think in the big scope of it all, it could still be considered kind of niche, right? And this feels like it kind of broke through, from, yeah. just from what people are saying about it, if that makes sense. Somehow, because it is a niche genre, it's in the sort of C, uh, I forget how the CRPG um, category of games, which is computer role playing game. Which a lot of people think, oh, that's right. not that's not niche. Like, there's a lot of really popular games that are RPGs. It's like, yeah, but not like not like a CRPG is. Like Skyrim is an RPG, but it's like right. not a CRPG. Totally so very different where it kind of emulates a lot of like what you might expect from a tabletop RPG, but in video game form. So typically they're just run very differently. Typically they're very difficult games because there's a lot of systems and rules and things to like kind of learn or know that if you don't know those things, you can really, that's where the difficulty comes from. You can get really screwed up in a lot of these games. And Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 were very difficult games that came out decades ago. Um, I, I never played either of those. I was too young to be into CRPGs when they were around. But, um, but yeah, See, I remember the, the old, like, I didn't play them at all, but one of my cousins did. And I remember thinking it looked so complicated and confusing, yeah. and I had no interest in it at the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, same. That was like, a long I time just, ago. They're, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about the genre other than, yeah, the genre is very niche, and you have to typically be kind of a pretty big nerd to be really into it but it um does do which other crpgs don't do this there's a lot of other crpgs will be live like real time like you everything that happens in the game is real time you tell someone to go attack a right. thing and he goes attacks the thing or whatever this Baldur's Gate three they did do a turn-based combat system and i appreciate that because i'm a big fan like of that. turn-based tactical strategy stuff Whereas a lot of the real-time strategy stuff, RTSs, that I've tried to get into before, and I've found a little success with every like a game here or there. The one that I really loved was the army, the Green Army Men RTS game that came out on like I don't know GameCube, PS2, something like that, I many that. years yeah. ago. I loved that game, but most RTSs are just like a lot for me for some reason, where you're trying to like control 
like a zillion things at once. Whereas yeah. I like to like kind of stop, strategize, that kind of thing. So this has really tickled that itch for me. Okay. So and, you mentioned And it's D oh, and D. I'm familiar with D and D. That's all I was gonna say. D and D. Now, um you mentioned like these systems. We might kind of get in the weeds a little bit here, but who cares? It, it's 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 about us right now. Yeah. So like <clears throat> like these these complex systems or whatever, like are these like combat related or are they like not combat related? It's everything, which has been really impressive. Obviously, there's a lot of combat. D&D, and by extension, Baldur's Gate 3, are very combat-centric, mechanically speaking. So, like, obviously, you have a lot of different combat abilities and spells and blah, blah, blah. But it does extend beyond combat as well in terms of how you, like, problem-solve. And most things in the game, and sometimes I discover them later, where it's like, oh, I did this thing this way. But now that I'm, like, going back through the area, oh, there was, like, five different ways I could have approached this. That's kind of wild. So, like, with the... Which is why it's been so, like, um, like it really has drawn me into even just the environment. Because if you are really keen and really observant and, like, look around, there's a lot to discover, the, like, in terms of actual exploration. Which, is, which the game doesn't tell you. It doesn't, like, hold your hand and say, oh, yeah, if you go to here, like secret it's like just pay attention and you can find a secret and it's like oh that's cool right really feels rewarding i bet yeah and then you do and like i i remember at one point and i didn't really know how the game worked yet this is very early in the game i i found oh there's a ledge over here that i can't walk to but actually if i do the jump action on a character i can jump this ledge and all my characters will follow or whatever and i can go down this like ledge or whatever and across a little bit of water there's this little cave this little alcove and i went into this alcove and there's this everyone rolls a perception check and this all just happens automatically when there's like something around that maybe like is hidden your characters will roll a perception check and if someone succeeds they'll see the hidden thing and someone succeeded and it's like oh there's something weird about this rock and i go up to the rock and i'm like i can't move the rock it's too heavy and I go around and I'm like, I can't get any of my characters to pick it up. I'll try to push the rock. So like there's a push action. So we're all like shoving at this rock trying to get it to move, but it's up against a wall. So I can't quite angle it to get it to move. And then later I discovered, oh, you could actually like literally lift and move stuff if you just like click and hold and drag it. As long as you're doing it with a character that has enough strength to lift the rock. So I came back with this beefy character. Came up to it because my main <laughs> character is playing a bard, actually. So we're very, like, very weak. No strength. <laughs> no muscles. But I came back with this other beefy character and lifted this rock. She moves this rock out of the way, and there was this hidden cache of, like, goodies. So it's like, the game doesn't tell you how to solve that. It's just like, there's a rock here. Figure it out. <laughs> that really can play into your immersion. Because, like, I don't know. It, anywhere you go, if there's some sort of payoff, whether it's big or small. It can be small. But the fact that you can go and do it. That's the really cool thing. There's like, this uh, chapel pretty awesome. early on that I've there's a button and I've pushed it and I don't know what it does. I've been up and down this chapel. I've been looking everywhere I can. I think it, I, I don't think it does anything. I think it does nothing. <laughs> so so you still don't know. I still Have you like don't gone know. back to it and tried again? Yes. And, and again? <laughs> I'm like, what does this button do? I still don't know. I don't think it does anything. It's this, uh, there's this heavily trapped room, and I think it's supposed to be a trick. Like, oh, if you press this, oh, maybe I disarmed the traps. But it doesn't. It doesn't do that. I don't know what it does. Weird. Well, so, like, it's just fun stuff like that where, like, it, I don't know, there's something about it where it doesn't hold your hand too much. There is, like, a mini-map, and if you discover certain, like, quests, it kind of points you in the direction you should go. But it's not in your face. It really lets you just explore the environment, and it's so dense. It's so packed where, like, every little area has something going on for it. It doesn't feel like you're just running from point A to point B with nothing in between. There is just so much. That is really nice and refreshing to hear because I feel like it's difficult for games to really nail that and from everything i've heard not just you say but other people online say too it's really kind of nailing that and yeah. uh that's kind of what i wanted to share with you um on my side so in terms of the openness and the exploration and there's things everywhere tears of the kingdom is very similar but that's probably where the similarities end because it's a totally different genre but <clears throat> i put you know damn near 200 hours into that game for the last couple months and um the thing that I did, and I'm curious about you with this too, and maybe on a game like Baldur's Gate 3 it may not be as effective, I don't know, but what I like to do with these big games that I get immersed in, which Tears of the Kingdom definitely did it for me, 
Um, I actually turn off the map, right? They, on the game, they call it pro mode. So there's no map, there's no HUD, there's no anything. And if you get hurt, like your hearts will show up and then it'll whatever, but then it'll go away again. Okay. Um, and, but like, and then also with Tears of the Kingdom 2, this is the same with Breath of the Wild, but you have to worry about the temperature, you have to worry about the sound, you have to worry about a lot of various elements in the world. Um, so like if you go into a very cold region, instead of like having a little thing that pops up, you'll have like a little temperature meter and it'll tell you, okay, you're too cold. Now you need to put on, you either need to take like an elixir that'll make you warm or you need to wear something warm or, or like wear like a hot weapon that's like got fire on it. You know, it's very physics heavy that those games. So, um, and, but what I like to do is I turned it off because I was so blown away with this, with Tears of the Kingdom and way more than Breath of the Wild. And anyway, I just fully immersed myself. So turn off the map. I rarely fast traveled. So I would just go from point A to point B, which just like with Baldur's Gate 3, it can be wherever you want point A and point B to B, right? And I would just hop on a horse or I would build a uh, vehicle or I would build a flying thing or whatever (laughs) I'm doing at the time and just go there. And And then like Link has like these visual cues when you're in those hotter or colder regions. So, like, he'll start to shiver, and you'll see him shake. So, like, I really... And then I go, oh, crap, I'm in a colder region. Because sometimes you won't know that it's actually colder, um, just based on the environment. You could already be in a snowy region, but the temperature changes throughout that region. So... Right. Um, so, it just... I would look at his visual cues, like, okay, he's cold. Let's put on an outfit that's warmer or whatever. And just doing stuff like that, first of all, made me memorize the... I mean, the map's huge, but I don't have it memorized. But there'd be parts that I could memorize and see better... And I just felt so, just in this world, I haven't felt that in ages in a game, um, just where you really feel like you're there. And it reminded me of you, because I remember you said that, like, with Skyrim, at least maybe, like, back in the day, maybe one of the first <laughs> time you played it, you said that you would, did something similar. Like, you wouldn't fast travel much, and you would just walk the, the trails. You wouldn't try and climb over mountains, right? You would just, yeah. like, walk the trails and really learn the layout. Yeah, I would actually take the roads and not like fast travel. So it's like obviously, I, I the little radar was it was up at the screen, so you could tell what direction you're supposed to go. But I would just I learned the roads. I learned where like oh yeah, if you take this and take a left at at I don't remember any of the name of the towns anymore. But if you take a left right. here, you take a right there, and then bada, you're there. Yeah, I, I remember doing that with uh, Skyrim. It. I did that with uh, with uh, 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 Grand Theft Auto Vice City. That was a big game where I knew <laughs> nice. literally every block of that map for some reason. But yeah, That's when you hilarious. can just actually turn all that. I love the pro mode that you mentioned with Tears of the Kingdom because that really forces you to learn the your environment by landmarks as opposed to just staring at the mini map and just head down going from point A to point B without taking in the game world. Because I've definitely right. caught myself doing that in other games where it's like, I don't even know where I am. I just followed the marker until I was there. Well, and there, I think there's two things to that too, though, because it also is a huge part of it has to do with how the world is built. So like yeah. if you look at a game like Tears of the Kingdom, um, which or, or a game or, or other kind of similar, I guess, games where like there are those monuments and like there's like the old fallout rule i think they were the first ones to do it like with like i think three and it was um always have three things that are like that stand out to you at any given time anywhere you're standing on the map right that's like that was like their old like development rule like always have three things that you could look at and want to go to and uh tears of the kingdom definitely did that um very well but that's a part of it too because if you play another game i always call it like the the like the ubisoft effect like you could play a game like far cry which those games are fun for 10 hours 15 hours but it's like and it's quote unquote open world you know but the world's just they're so boring and it's just kind of the same (laughs) things everywhere and there aren't those monuments you like have to look at the map so like so it really depends on how the if the world is built well like then the immersion is by far the best way to go but it has to be the right you know it has to be built the right way I, I, that's like the difference when you're when you can feel that a game was made lovingly and passionately versus it was mm-hmm. made like just i don't know made to just be made where you know like oh like 
the three interesting things, no matter where you're standing, you can see and go to, means that a lot of attention to detail had to go into crafting a world meant to be like lived in, to actually be looked around in, as opposed to, oh, yeah. we have a map, we're going to just like make the map and then throw down some points of interest just haphazardly and then stick quests on them. But like, we don't really care at what given point in the map that you'd be standing to see these things. Cause we know you're just going to be eyes focused on a mini map or something. And that just right. doesn't feel as like loving care. It doesn't mean that there wasn't love and care put into maybe something else in the game, but like in terms of crafting the world and creating that immersion. And I feel like if I'm going to play a game, that's like at a big open world these days. Cause there's so many of them now you know, ranging in quality, but yeah. and ranging in openness. Like if I'm going to do it, I want it to be a game kind of like you're talking, like you're talking about, or a game that I'm talking about where it actually feels alive and open and anywhere you go, there's something to do and you can do it in multiple ways. Like I heard somebody say this on a podcast. I can't remember which one it was, but someone said there's, there's a difference between open world games and then games that have open worlds, you know, yes. like, and, I think that's a big distinction that I've learned. I'm just, if I'm going to play a game that just has an open world, I'd kind of rather just have a more linear experience to begin with. I felt that way since I mentioned cyberpunk, I actually really felt that way about cyberpunk. A lot of the time playing that game, I wished it wasn't open world because I don't think the open world does anything to actually add to the game's experience because it's so massive. The city's so sprawling that the driving component becomes necessary to get from point A to point B, but the driving component is so lackluster and like just meaningless. Uh, like it's yeah. just getting from point A to point B. That's its only purpose. There's nothing else to do while driving. Like you can't do any car combat. You can't like get into any chases. Uh, all, these are all things that were promised early on in development that got scrapped or whatever. But I just wish, because so many things got scrapped in that game, unfortunately, but I wish that they had the foresight to say, we just need a smaller map that like feels bigger because everything you can do in that map is packed so densely. Yeah. And then they could have put a lot more focus on different aspects that were like maybe a little uh, lacking originally. I didn't like the driving around in that game and I didn't like doing fast travel cause I didn't want to deal with a loading screen. So it's just like, here I am hopping in the car to get God knows across the city again for this stupid thing. But then once you're there, I love the gun the gunplay and i love the like running around i like the abilities there's a lot of that game i loved but i didn't like the open world i felt like it wasn't necessary right um did you so like did you find yourself just ending up just kind of sticking to the main plot and just going through the main story uh no i did a bunch of side stuff but it depended on what the side stuff was there's a lot of radial like side stuff that's like oh there's like a police shootout with a gang and you can come help the police or whatever and they just pop up but there's like nothing interesting about them you just show up and it's a shootout or whatever or there will be a couple missions that are just like oh there's like a hidden thing to find or whatever but those were always boring there was like other side stuff that weren't necessarily main plot necessary but were still really well thought out really fleshed out and, and had character development and stuff like that i like doing that stuff so it just kind of How, depended. I do have a I do have a question. I know we're kind of running late, but who who the heck cares? Um, <laughs> B- Baldur's Gate three, the world itself, like, does it is it really big, or is it kind of one of those things where it feels really big and it's dense, or is it both? It's uh, it feels really big. I don't know how big the map entirely looks like across the different areas that exist because it's not just like one map. So, like, the first place you'll go to is, like, this um, Nautiloid Rex site or something like that. And the entire area around it is called something else, I think, or whatever. But that's, like, the, the, the area. That's, like, the main map. And you're, like, oh, if you go to, like, the map screen, you hit M, you look at the map screen, like, oh, this doesn't seem like it's all that big. Because you can kind of go from one point to another, what, like, on the map fairly quickly. But you actually start moving around and finding stuff everywhere you go and people and like things to do that it feels so much bigger than it looks if you just look at the map. Or at least that's how I felt. Right. Like right. I've okay, spent so sense. many hours at that, uh, around the Nautiloid area just like finding things to do and learning the game and meeting characters for the first time. And there was just so much stuff to do in that that um, – I don't know. I don't know how many hours I've actually put into it, but like, I'm not, I feel like I've only scratched the surface of this game in the amount of map space that I've traveled. 
I haven't seen any gameplay really. So I so so forgive me if this is a silly question, but like when it comes to I know it's very narrative driven, like I know that. But yeah. when it comes to like dialogue, are there like trees and stuff? Like how does that work? Um it's uh like you'll get into a dialogue and you'll have options. So like if someone says a thing, you'll have options about how, like how you want to respond. Um and you will have a handful of options that are like maybe typical responses you'll have some responses that would require some kind of skill like if you're trying to like deceive someone so you want to lie to them that's going to be a deception uh check you'll have to roll a die and they can see through your lie and that might have consequences or you might successfully okay. lie about the thing and that has its own consequences so you've got like deception and intimidation and persuasion but then there's also class specific stuff where like i said i was playing a bard so there's stuff that comes up where it's like oh yeah Oh, there's uh there was someone do like i came across a character who was trying to write a song she was like just out in the woods trying to write a song and doing a really bad job of it and as a bard you can walk up and you just start like like she she's like she gets halfway through a lyric but she doesn't know where to go and then you can just try to finish the sentence for her and you have this like back and forth where you're like you construct the song together and she makes this like beautiful That's song awesome. And I was like, that's really cool. Or there's another time I met another bard uh, who had been like captured by goblins or something. And he was just basically on this pedestal, like trying to like tell, like tell a story without uh, upsetting the goblins and getting murdered. And you could kind of come <laughs> up as a bard and one up them <laughs> do a better job than him. That's awesome. So like, just stuff like that. That's like specific to your class. Or there's stuff that require roles. So it's not like a dialogue tree, but you have options and they all either depend on a thing or don't depend on a thing. Right. And some can have consequences. And some can have um, consequences. And since you walk around with a with your party, your party is four. It's you and like three other people. They all have their own morality and their own beliefs and ethics and what they like and don't like. So they're all paying attention to what you do and say, and they all react to that as well. That's really cool. Well, I will, I, I will say this. Just because um, a, that a game like that does pique my interest a lot, and I would enjoy that if Starfield comes out and I don't like it, because that's kind of what I devoted my next chunk of time to. If I don't like Starfield, I might hop on over to uh, Baldur's Gate, and who knows? Maybe I still will. I just you know yeah. how it is. There's so many games, so little time. I mean, depending on how Starfield ends up shaking out, uh, at this point, I mean, Baldur's Gate Three seems like a very clear game of the year winner to me. Like at this point. Sure. So, like, depending on how, like, what else comes out and how it shakes out, I think Baldur's Gate three, even if you don't play it like right away, if you get it down the road, I don't think you're going to be disappointed one way or the other for picking it up whenever you do. Yeah, it it definitely. Uh, um, well, that that's kind of what I was thinking too, like with, with Game of the Year, because I was thinking, I was thinking, I don't know what the fourth would be, because I think they usually do four, but I was assuming it was going to be assuming Starfield's good, Tears of the Kingdom's going to be there, yeah. and then it's going to be Baldur's Gate three. And I don't know what the fourth would be because I don't know what else. Is there anything else that big coming out this year? Maybe uh, Diablo Four. Diablo Four. I heard maybe? that was really good. Yeah, but, that's actually a good point. I pro that that seems like a strong four, maybe. But I I played a little bit of the older games, but and, and I like I like those games, but I just I have once again I think if I had all the time in the world I would pick up four and play it because I heard it's like really good. But uh, time that came out like right when Zelda came out, so I was just like, eh, yeah. I got priorities, I, so I finally uh, just picked up Disco Elysium, which was Game of the Year in like twenty, whatever eighteen or something like that. And I, I had played about an hour of it before, and I loved that game, but never picked it up. I finally just recently picked it up, uh, actually before I got Baldur's Gate three. But now I have Baldur's Gate three, so I don't know when I'm going to play it again. <laughs> I got to get back Dude, and play Disco <sighs> Elysium because it was, it was the hour that I spent playing it was so good, and it's kind of similar to Baldur's Gate in in a way. So I, I recommend that game as well, but I haven't played as much of it. That might be a way to go, would be like, especially if you have that backlog that's just ever-growing, but you still want to play some games. It may not be a bad idea just to play through each game of the year. You know what I mean? Like, that's, what a great yeah. taste. Um, but the, the thing is, though, because like I know last year was Elden Ring, and that broke through, too, because there was people who weren't fans of games that From even made that played that game and really loved it. It's always and it's always so fun when someone like when From comes out with a new game and then people that haven't played you know From software game picks that up for the first time they're like what is going on why is it so mean to me <laughs> <laughs> if you're unfamiliar yeah um, but see I still want to play that I haven't touched that I don't think you have either right 
I haven't played Elden Ring. Um, I have it. Uh, my brother picked it up, so it's on the console that we we share that he, he plays, and I don't because I I've become only a PC gamer. But technically, right. I have access to it, and I still haven't played it, which is weird because I was a big um, uh, I was a big Demon Souls and Bloodborne and Dark Souls. Yeah, fan, that had you written all over it. Elden Ring. Yeah. So maybe maybe eventually I got Baldur's Gate and Disco Elysium and God knows what else to get through. Get through. Yeah, there's lots of games. These, That's a good thing. Though. We live big. in a good time. We do. It's a good problem to have. First world problems. Yeah, absolutely. You want to take a quick advertisement break? <laughs> Probably should. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Profoundish is brought to you in part by Magic Man Mo, a gaming YouTube channel run by me. We stream and we do variety Let's Plays. Check out a short stream compilation to see if it's something that you're going to be into. It's a lot of fun. I made it so I know. That's Magic Man Mo on YouTube. Profoundish is brought to you in part by Alex Duquette Medleys. I make theme song medleys, which is where I take a bunch of theme songs and mash them up into one bite-sized song. From Nickelodeon to Adult Swim, I cover it all. So, if you want to take a fun, nostalgic trip, search my name, Alex Duquette, on YouTube or go to alexduquette.net. Welcome back, everybody. Hey. We're going we're gonna, to we're, we're return to some of our tier list routes. Oh. Alex, can you see on your screen my screen? Can I see on my screen your screen? Yeah. Um, oh, oh, this will be fun. I'm sharing yes, my screen with it. you. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, this isn't specific to RPGs or open world or whatever, but we're going to do a bit of a video game tier list that I didn't put together. I found this on the internet, and I figured that that That's would work out. That's even more interesting. Right, like because I figured we, you and I don't know every game that we have or haven't played. So I'm like, this is just right. a random assortment of games on a tier list that we're going to tier between S, A, B, C, D, F, or just I don't know or never played it or whatever. Okay, I like this. And the question becomes, do we want to rank these on how much we enjoy them or how much they're like, like how m- important they are to video gaming or some combination oh. thereof? Or do we want to do something else? Like, if this game were a hot female, would you take her on a date? No, I'm just... Right. (laughs) You know, the the classic Alex tier list topic. (laughs) Yeah. Is Um, a trombone dateable? Well, hell yes. That's an S for me. (laughs) I... I, That's actually a good question, because I can already look at some of these on the list and have different answers for either one. Like, there might be a game or two in here that I'll go, eh, I'm not a fan of, but it's important. Right. So, I don't. What's more interesting? What's What's more interesting to you? I think maybe on some level we should do like how much we like the game. We can include like as a part of liking it how important we feel it is. We can include that. But I feel like if you and I just discuss, oh well, this is important because X Y Z. I think we're gonna probably just end up agreeing on a lot of things. Where it's like like one yeah. of these that's coming up that's is fair. like Minecraft. We're gonna be like, well, that like that game alone like. Microsoft bought from Mojang for whatever it was, two billion dollars or something stupid. So, like, you know, the game's an important thing to the industry, right? Yeah. So we can talk about that, and I think we'd agree. But like, if we talk about like maybe personal enjoyment on some of these, maybe. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's go into it. Let's just let's just jump into it. We don't have a lot of time in this segment, which is okay because some we of these just, games, yeah, we can slam uh, through. Them. Yeah, some of these games were well, that and some of these games we aren't gonna have played before, so we'll that we'll get through yeah, that, that pretty quick. That's true. The, the first on this list, which I forget how many is in this list. It's like a zillion. Holy. The, yeah. What? I'm scrolling down. Yeah, there's like a zillion on this list. So <laughs> we're not going to get through the whole thing. Don't worry. <laughs> that's not the point. Okay, I was going to say, we should just do a handful because that's like a <laughs> yeah. ton. I thought it was just those like the first row of three. Holy crap. Yeah, you, you saw you saw, it, but just a taste. <laughs> yeah, we'll just do it. So, yeah, we'll just do it. So we'll, yeah, we'll do whatever we get to. But the first on this list is Roblox. And I don't know that you've had any experience whatsoever with Roblox. I uh, I have never played Roblox. I don't know anything about it, but I know that you've streamed it. <laughs> I've streamed it so so much. I kind of ha- I feel I almost feel obligated as someone who like other people have discovered my channel and thought thought that I was a Roblox exclusive channel. And I'm like, no, <laughs> this is a side thing that I do, and that has confused people at some point in time. I have I've shaken that. Uh, since but uh there are definitely games in roblox roblox is an interesting one to have on this list anyway because it's really not a game itself it's a platform for other games made through that platform i thought 
Okay. Yeah. So some games in Roblox are really fun, and some are just trash. <laughs> so it's kind of like right. It's kind of weird to include this on this list. I would say in terms of importance to the industry, it has definitely done some numbers and done some things quietly, like in the shadows. So I, I would say it's important to yeah. the industry. But for personal enjoyment, I will admit there have been some bangers I really enjoyed. Do you remember playing Gun Game a lot, like on like uh, Black Ops or whatever at Justin's house oh. like years ago? Oh, yeah. There's this oh, yeah. gun game in Roblox. I forget what it's even called. Now. I think it's called Arsenal. And I played so much of that because I enjoyed it. And it, it helps that when you're playing in Roblox, you're probably playing against a bunch of like eight year olds or something. So so you're like stomping <laughs> a bunch of kids at this like game. Right. But um, I don't know. So some games like that I really enjoy. There's a game that I actually was in the beta for Struced. And I had some like actual like legendary beta only gear or something. It was like a Fortnite game, but in Roblox in Roblox. But um, huh. Uh, other games are like a uh, pet simulator where it's just literally gambling. You just roll a gacha machine and get a pet and then go mine some coins mindlessly until you have enough to go roll another pet. It's uh, pretty trash, wow. but it was extremely popular when it came out because kids loved it because <laughs> it was just gambling for kids. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's what I think of when I, when I think of Roblox. I do think I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm just saying I think kids, right? Like, yeah. That, that seems to be a really big game so, but, but that's the only thing i can speak to is the quote-unquote importance and it does seem like yeah. it's huge or it was i'm gonna huge. put it i'm gonna put it in c only because it does have good stuff but it has a lot of trash i'm gonna put it in c in that sense but um okay. i will say i have a question for you the first time you ever heard of roblox did you think it was a minecraft clone absolutely i did i think that's what the first i thought time I yeah, the first time Roblox was like out or whatever, the first time I knew about it, I'm like, oh, what is this? It's a really crappy, almost Lego-looking Minecraft. This is terrible. But I never played it. I just thought that's what I thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was that, too. I thought, yeah, just a knockoff Minecraft. And it's yeah. so weird because it just literally isn't that, and everyone thought that. <laughs> so I don't – it's just wild to me. Anyway, next yeah, I on think this that list, speaks to the importance of Minecraft, to be honest. Right, yeah. But we'll, we'll get to that. Minecraft is coming up very soon. I think I know where we're, we're going to put it. But uh, the next on yeah. this list is Fortnite, or as my friends so, sometimes call it, Fortnite or uh, Fork Knife. <laughs> I, uh, I like Fortnite. I, I have played Fortnite a handful of times. I played it a lot. I played it mainly before it got to, like, Roblox status, if not higher. I mean, it's Fortnite, for God's sake. Um, so... Once it got really huge and all the seven-year-olds were playing it, I'd stopped playing it. And I never played it a ton because, like, it's just those kind of games aren't my cup of tea, and I'm bad at them, um, the, like the Battle Royale style. Yeah. And, and you know the, the interesting story behind Fortnite, right? Like, originally, wasn't there going to be, like, this big, like, campaign, and then they released the Battle Royale version of it before the campaign, and that's all yeah, that the, people cared about afterwards the, or something? The Battle Royale was supposed to be just the free thing you could do as, like, a side thing to get you interested in this, in like, in the environment, because they had a whole, like, story mode about, like, the storm and all this crap or whatever. They had a full-on, like, single-player game, or maybe it was, like, a party-sized game or whatever, but it was, like, a whole campaign, regular game that they were going to make, and it was, like, 30 or $40 or something for this game, maybe more, I don't remember. But no one cared about it. Everyone got the Battle Royale. <laughs> no one bought the game game. And so just slowly over time, Fortnite's like, never mind about the game thing. The Battle Royale makes us so much goddamn money on loot boxes. Or right. whatever they sell. I don't battle passes, that's what I meant. So much money on battle passes that like they just dropped the actual game part and just went, We're a battle royale now. I mean that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. I will say though, like it's fun. It's a fun experience. Um it's it's not the first of its kind, but it's definitely I mean, at this point, it has to be the most popular battle royale style game. It has to be. Oh yeah, it destroyed like, PUBG because PUBG, like PUBG was and... the top, and then Fortnite came out, and there was like a rivalry. But now between the two, it's Fortnite hands down. No, I don't know if this is a deep cut or not. I think it kind of is. Do you remember it, it, something Z? Day Z. Um, is it Day Z? Because that did that. I think that was the first game. Was that what it was called? Or maybe think of a different game. I'm pretty sure it was Day Z. There's another game, World War Z, but uh, I think it was Day Z or something like that. And that one wasn't technically a battle royale, but it was a multiplayer online thing that had its own share of issues. But uh, was I think it probably crawled so that PUBG could run. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but Fortnite, I don't know. I mean, where are you thinking? Like, 
I don't the, so the weird thing about Fortnite is it's had game modes that I've enjoyed and I don't even remember what the game modes were just anything but the the normal the, the normal thing because I sucked at the building I couldn't do it I'd be running up and like yeah, just like shooting at a guy and then they'd build a goddamn castle in front of me and I'm like I don't think this was necessary to defeat me like it's <laughs> like <laughs> like I'm not I'm already not great at shooters I'm okay but like you just built this castle to flax right that's the whole thing about the building too like i remember years ago when they were talking about this game and like the building really the building has become and it has been for a long time now like a complete just defense mechanism like that's it but when they were talking about it like when they were like promoting the game it was like you can build these things and like you know to, to like hide and everything but now it's literally just jump bridge jump bridge jump bridge or whatever they do and it's just I, I think and maybe they kind of envisioned it happening that way, but it's just full on just them defending themselves. Now, I don't see anybody just building things to build things. I think they were re- unless it's just for a game modes or something. They removed the building, though, last I knew, believe it or not, see, to try to bring oh, people back into the I game. <laughs> yeah, like I heard I haven't played it since, but like they removed it because like, it, you know, it was so like. Uh, I don't. I can't think of the word divisive or whatever. The people that liked yeah. the building and didn't like the building, and I think because they also added bots. That there were there are bots in the world too now, and this was oh. all in an effort because the 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 power scale was too lopsided. The people that were really good at the game were really good at the game, like unfairly yeah. good at the game for the vast majority of players. So to like to actually let new players have even a modicum of a chance to get like anywhere in the game like to even get a single kill they added bots to the game so that people at a lesser rank or whatever could at least enjoy the game and then they removed the building so that people that weren't building goddamn castles in two seconds could actually enjoy the game (laughs) so they like removed it so it's actually uh it's changed a lot actually interesting but um I say I, I would say if this were like in terms of industrial importance or whatever Fortnite, it's hard to say. Would it have to be like A or S? Probably S out of importance to the industry because it changed so much and it was so popular. But in terms of personal enjoyment, uh, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of funny. I think I enjoy it less than I do Roblox. <laughs> So, oh really so on a personal level this was again way early on which is funny because i have some gear from when it was like the game first came out that's like considered legendarily rare now because it was from like season one chapter one or whatever wild so <laughs> but i don't even like the game so it's like so it's like for me it's right. like the low c or d i wouldn't say f because i don't hate the game but it's just like yeah. i don't know okay but if you you know if you're like oh it's fun i i can bump it up but i'm not passionate about this game See, I'm not passionate either. I mean, I haven't touched it in ages. Um, I'm, I, I was just simply saying, yeah, it, it, it's I enjoyed it when I played it, right? That sort of thing. And right. I've never played Roblox, so I don't really have it as a reference. I'm okay putting it below Roblox, but I think C is fine, especially factoring in its importance. So. I'll, I'll bump it up above Roblox just because you've act, actually at least played Fortnite, so you can't really say much about Roblox. But it. Okay, fair. I, could, I could see it. If like some game modes on Fortnite, I did enjoy enough. Just the experience as a whole is hard for me to rate because it has changed so much. Yeah. Uh, Minecraft I, finally on this list. Well, you know where to put it, but I would like to talk about it too. I, um, I think without a doubt, I don't play it at all anymore. Um, but I was so into this game when I was, and I think it's got to go into S. Yes, S hundred percent. Plus if Starting with importance, I, I believe Minecraft, if it isn't the number one, it's like one, it's one of the highest selling games of all time, if not the highest selling game of all time. Like, it is huge. And I remember when you and I played it for a long time, way back in the day, um, and there's just, there's, I don't know, it, it changed everything. <laughs> like, it's the game that changed everything for me. Um it- I mean, it what really hasn't been said did, about it already, you know? It really did shake everything. Just these block people just mining and building stuff. I just It was the epitome of exercising creativity, I think, in a mm-hmm. game. In terms of, like, the most sandbox of all sandboxes that could be made came from Minecraft. Yeah. And it, it, it set an, an impossible standard. Like, and it, it was so influential because there were so many, like, games that were clearly inspired by it that came after that still come out now um 
whether it be overall gameplay and style or just style. Because I remember at the time, especially because this publicly released, like what, 2009, 2010? Like publicly? Uh, yeah, the like initial release date, 1.0, was 2011. 2011. Wow, okay. Um, so actually that checks out because that's I got into it right at the beginning of that and we were still in school then. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. So because uh, I got um, into it before that, I was in beta something. I don't remember you were, what yeah. it was. Well, yeah, because you and a buddy of ours would talk about it. I'm like, what game are you guys talking about? And yeah, I thought I thought the same thing that a lot of people thought at initially when the game got started to pick up steam, and it was the graphics are terrible. Why would I play this? And yeah. remember, like that was a thing, especially at that time. Because if you look back at games at that time, it was all about the the edgy, dark, gritty, realistic graphics and yeah, you know, all that stuff. And um, like that was super like pushed a lot. And the game like this comes out. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. So and now I feel like that even kind of broke open the way for people to realize we don't have to make games that always look super realistic. We can just take a stylistic approach. And I feel like that really popularized that, too. When that, then that got real extremely uh popular uh to mod the game and you could like download different skins so like different te- or yeah. i think textures different texture packs where you could play the game and it would look a little bit different and textures in minecraft got really popular so talking oh, yeah. about like you could literally decide how you wanted that game to 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 look if you wanted to mod it a little bit i forgot i i remember i remember the full-on mods too like the yeah. old school ones like tech it and like uh-huh. uh Oh, what else? I did tech it. What else did I do? There was a few other big ones way back in the day, but that's probably making us sound like old farts. But yeah, tech it, tech um, it was the big one. I I think what it was. There were uh, there were so many though, and I don't remember the names of like any of them. But yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, you're right. So yeah, many that memories. Was the, that's the number one most sold game, multi platform. That includes like mobile because it has a mobile game and all of it. it it's Jordan, everywhere. <laughs> it's two two hundred and thirty eight million copies. Holy crap! Yeah, which some people own it on multiple platforms. So, like, yeah, it's it's stupid. <laughs> wow, what's if, do you have? Do you have like second and third place up? I want to guess gra- if you do. Uh, second. Oh, you're yeah. about to say it. I was about I, to I actually. You, I was going to say that too. I was going to say GTA Five. GTA Five, which was highly talked about when it came out, it sold 185 million copies uh, across all its platforms. Which its online is still very huge. Oh, still, I know. That's crazy. It's like a like a 12-year-old game or something. Yeah, Actually, I think it came it's 10. 20, I think it came out in 13. Yeah, 2013. It's 11 years old now. It will be 11 um, years old in September. Yeah. Insane. It's, it's, it's lived through, like, three console generations. <laughs> yeah, I, I initially got the game on the PS3. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, so, uh, okay, I'm trying to think what number three would be. See, you won't I don't know, it. like... A part of me wants to think it's like an old school game, but like I don't think that it, they just sold that much back then because there's so many the industry so much bigger now. So I just don't think because I would think I like ha- oh Tetris or something, but I don't I just don't think that would be what it is. I have no idea. Well, you actually nailed it on the head. It is Tetris, but it's EA's release of it in 2006. EA's really? version of Tetris uh, sold 100 million copies. Yeah. Why does that sound not true to me? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's it's just such a weird specific It's extremely popular version. overseas, yeah. Well, yeah, it's just, it's a so. newer release. So people that were, like, into the old stuff, like the old cabinets or whatever, it sold well at the time, but there's so many more people that play games now that everyone knows about Tetris, but didn't necessarily buy Tetris. Then te- uh, EA released in 2006 uh, for mobile uh, initially. I think you can get it on other random things now, too. Uh, Wild. But it's like 100 million copies on that, yeah. Three totally different games. And then four, I bet you'd believe four, though. <laughs> four was Wii Sports. Wii Sports, yep. Yeah, that was a phenomenon at the time. Yeah, Just shy of 83 uh, million copies there. But anyway, take we'll, us to we'll five. S- take us to five, just so we know. All right, all right. We'll take us to five. <laughs> uh, five, we've actually touched on a little bit, and that was PUBG Battlegrounds. Really? The Fortnite competitor, which Fortnite won't be on this list, I don't think, because most people that bought the battle or played the Battle Royale don't buy the Battle Royale because it's free. Yeah. <laughs> so wow, I don't know I where Fortnite would be. Five. Yeah, wow. that's number five with 75 million sales multi-platform. Still a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. 
Yeah, that's crazy. All right, what do you say? Let's uh, let's put one more thing on this list that we've actually played before. The next one on this list is Final Fantasy Online. I've never played it. Have you? I no, I've hardly touched any Final Fantasies, let alone online. So I can't played. tell like which Final Fantasy this is supposed to be because it's like cut off. I don't know if it's like uh, one of them. Uh, I don't know which one the MMO is like thirteen or fourteen or something like that. Anyway, I'll put that in the never played because I don't think either of us have played that. Yeah. Although I would say, do you remember the days we, we briefly played uh, Wizardry um, Wizardry Online and we did a YouTube video of it? Oh my gosh, what a memory. Yes. God, that was, that was a lot of fun and actually a fairly that popular video. I think I did a couple of videos of it at the time, fairly popular because it, the game had like just released for me. I should have stuck on it. I could have been a Wizardry MMO channel until it did tragically shut down like two years later. But um, I... I remember <laughs> laughing very hard and having a really fun time playing that because it was me, you, and a, I can't remember who the third friend was, but there was a third I think friend it was, too. I think it was Wiley, but I, I don't remember. Maybe it was Wiley, yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah, super fun. I can't tell which Borderlands this is because it's cut off, but uh, Borderlands. That is three. Okay. Um, so obviously, you know, or you you just learned that I, I did play that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I played I, a little bit of, I think, two, I think, but like only a very little bit. Uh, these are, games are not in my wheelhouse. Okay, so I've played one, two, and three. Um, it's not my favorite games of all time, but I do, but I do enjoy them. They're the only like kind of shooters like that I can, can play through at my style and my pace and be decent at and i think that's why i draw i'm drawn to it um okay. and of course the games are just kind of goofy and dumb um so i like it um i mean i would put it above Fortnite and roblox uh, okay yeah it, fair per, per me personally right importance i don't know i mean like it's not nearly as important as Fortnite, roblox or minecraft but it did make a splash when it first came out because it was pretty different at the time yeah um, i think it's game. a very popular game i'm kind of with you there i don't know that it, it's so industry breaking that it would be uh it would top either of those three in terms of like industrial importance but uh it was right. very popular it is very popular um and i'm willing to recognize that i bet it would be really fun to play with like four people because i think that was the maximum number of players that could play at once or whatever but um yeah, I didn't play yeah. a lot of it, and I, I remember not being a huge fan of the gunplay, actually, but I don't know. I never got very far into it, so maybe I just really? never found the right combination of weapons and mods that I liked or whatever, which is very possible. Sure. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I always thought it was super tight, um, but it could have been just, yeah, once again, my loadouts that I was using or whatever. But, right. I mean... I would understand that. So, uh, it, it's if weird because we're it in two lot, different places. And you'd put it, well, I just haven't played very much of it, but if you liked it a lot, uh, I would st I would kind of take your lead on that. Are you looking at, like, B territory, A, to, what are you looking at? Um, Like, if there were more on the B list, which we could always go back to this on another day and do more of this list or something. But oh, yeah, I think we I, definitely should. Okay, I'm glad you said that, because I would say, like, I see this as being the back of B, but right now okay. it's the only one, so I just put it in B. Yeah, we'll put That's it in B. Right. Put it. Like, we just barely scratched the, the surface of, the, of this list, everybody. Uh, we will return to it eventually. Um, I we will should, be yeah. bookmarking this, and we'll, we'll, we'll come right back to where we left off. Because we didn't get through very many today, but that's totally okay. I think we all well, agreed Minecraft is so far winning. Because this oh, is a competition, yeah. uh, clearly. <laughs> dude, this should be, like, our, um, our next, like, huge saga. Because, I mean, scroll through that list again, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, this list is massive. I don't know what's all on it. I just kind of scrolled through it. I legit think we should like do this every like this handful of weeks, like every like three four weeks. Just do another one of these, because we could. And there's a lot here that I know I haven't played. We probably both haven't played. So actually, some of these will probably barrel through faster than you believe. But this will be eventually like a crazy epic list. So yes, we should go back to this pretty soon and do some more. I think that sounds fun because I love talking games, and it's a great excuse for us to to do it so yeah and then we'll just uh, i'll keep adding to this list i'll edit it i'll keep adding yes. games and we'll just turn into a video game podcast where we just we just rate <laughs> I love video it. games only <laughs> exclusively i love it all right thank you all for listening this has been profoundish if you could just but do us a tiny little favor before you go and do literally everything for us i need you to like subscribe five star yeah. favorite 
whatever you could do this podcast where you're listening, do those things. We're available on Spotify, Apple, uh, YouTube. YouTube has a podcast thing. Check that out. Um, follow yep. us on our socials at Profoundish Pod on the Twitter, the Instagram, and the TikTok. Uh, posts there are rare, so we won't be bothering you too much. So you should follow that anyway. Funny stuff when we do <laughs> post. Um, yeah. Alex, where can we find you specifically? Um, the best place to start would be my landing page, alexduquette.net. That's my first name, Alex, last name, D-U-Q-U-E-T-T-E, alexduquette.net. Um, I'm a musician, first and foremost. I do, uh, I'm probably most known for my medleys. So if you're just listening to this for the first time and you don't know who I am, um, you can go there and then link over to my medleys where I basically do uh, all kinds of theme songs. And I put them into short little songs. Um, I'm working on a bunch of new ones right now. And yeah, there's probably something there for you. If you go watch one, comment and tell me uh, if I've covered your favorite show or not. And if I haven't, tell me what show that is, and I'll make sure to cover it in a future medley. Weston, what about you? I've got a landing page, WestonHasty.com, where you can find all the things that I do. In particular, if you're into video games, like this episode was about, uh, I've got a YouTube channel called Magic Man Mo, all one word. You should definitely check it out. I stream sometimes, post uh, videos of random things sometimes, especially point-and-click random things. Just check it out. Flash games that, you know, Flash is dead. Haha, I'm still playing them. Check it out. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Also, follow me on Twitter. Uh, experience my villain era with me. My villain era so much so so far has been mostly just posting memes to Twitter. But come follow me at, at Twitter at Weston Hasty. It's called X now, but I'll keep calling it Twitter. Um, right. And read some some weird poetry at hastilymadedecision dot com. There you go. That's all my yes, stuff. Definitely do that. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. Whatever you guys do, um, you know, don't do anything Alex wouldn't do. Yeah. He, he nailed That's my it. advice. Yeah. Just uh whatever you do, just don't do whatever Alex wouldn't do. What yeah, wouldn't do Alex do? W W A D. What wouldn't Alex do? <laughs> what wouldn't Alex do? Very similar that's to W W A D. What would a- Yeah, that's it. Next episode. What wouldn't Alex do? It'll be like a game show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally jotting this down. This is funny. Uh, Alright, thank you all so much for listening. Bye. See ya. Alright. Alright. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha